On the heels of me calling Xbox to task and me being labeled an agenda holder hating <laughs> hater of the platform, I want to destroy all the villages and the babies playing the game system. On the heels of all that silliness and foolishness, I want to turn the mic over to a well-known Xbox enthusiast, might I even say fanboy, who I believe better illustrates the issues that Xbox is having better than I ever could. Let's see y'all try to damage control this. Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another video, another episode of The Medicine, titled Xbox Fanboy Breaks Down Current Xbox Issues. Xbox Issues, exactly. Better than I ever could. But before we get into all that, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the reason. And y'all know the slogan. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. Okay, y'all. So, here's the deal. On the heels of, you know, Rich of Review Tech telling y'all that things are going crazy at 343 and people want to ignore that but you had the same individuals that wanted to focus so much on naughty dog even though naughty dog has a game that's knocking it out of the park right now you know what i'm saying um and then on the heels of me being considered someone that just wants to see the the brand fail i, I i'm just here to say that it's bullpucky there's a lot of people out there that are hurt that are serious fans of the Xbox brand. They are disappointed, and I get that. But instead of turning their disappointment into positive reinforcement to demand better, they want to blame the people that is just simply telling you that a stop sign says stop. You know what I mean? I didn't create these showcases. I don't have the power to make the people think that they waited. They thought 99.9999999% of the people that said that the Xbox showcase sucked don't even know who the hell I am. Don't know who Richard Review Tech is. Don't even know who Next Gen 720 is. It's time for my Xbox brethren to get out of damage control zone and get back over into reality. And I've been trying to say this since 2018 since I've been a staunch follower of Xbox, right? For what, 17, 18 years up until that point. Same thing with Z. We just saw the Titanic was sinking and y'all wanted to stay in there until it hit the, the bottom of the ocean floor. And I love my life. My family may not love it, but I do. So I, I, I hop the hell out until they do better, until they patch things up and do better. And they can do better. And I'm not sticking with a sinking ship that they just, that, that apparently they just want to destroy and rebuild to something else, but they don't want to tell you about it. It's irreparent that a lot of that is happening. And I've been warning of that. Now I get it. If you like the direction that they're going into, if you can see, if you can separate the forest from the trees and you know exactly what's going on and you like it, then so be it. You like it. If you like it, I love it. I'm just not, I'm just not buying it. But on the heels of all that, if you're someone that claims that MM2K, you should stick, you, you should stay on board. The things that you cherish, the things that brought you here, they're coming back. Just hold on. And as every day comes by, the more and more separate from the things that we consider dear and true to us that brought us to the platform seem to just be floating away, cascading into the horizon. You still want me to hold on and stay on the sinking ship with you? Hell no. So as I've been warning and I've been outcast, fine with me, it's even gotten to the point to where Hey, I'm starting from square one again with Stadia. New platform. They got some promising things going on. I love the feel of the tech. We're going to start from square one again. I'm back in 2001 with the Xbox, the OG Xbox. You know what I'm saying? We start from square one again, all right? But even if you want to ignore me, there are staples in the community, people that are so well known that they've been appearing on podcast shows like Podcasts Unlocked that are still heavy enthusiasts of the platform, but they not even willing to damage control this stuff so i figured that it was time for me maybe to shut up and maybe let you listen to them maybe that'll snap you out of your, your psychosis okay so what i'm gonna do here 
is I'm going to play two poignant clips from the homie Cicero Holmes. All right. I believe he's on the podcast Spawn On Me and different other things. He's a um, serious Xbox streamer and an Xbox enthusiast. And he does a whole bunch of other shows. Right. And he's more in line with a lot of the Xbox communities thinking of the system he loves the system and he loves game pass but there are just some things he's not willing to damage control that i'm still hearing people damage control and those two things relate to two fears fear number one is xbox is peddling majority shovelware slash quirky double a experiences at best that may not be it for the masses and fear two is even when they are putting their best foot forward xbox is just not showing the competence enough of it to deliver in a way that will attract again more gamers and bring them to the platform and this showcase was indicative of that that if you're already in the ecosystem cool but as far as doing what xbox needs to do which was appeal and and, and extend their mind share it fell short of that and that's the problem and cicero highlights those two points in these two clips that i'm about to play so again i'm gonna shut up i'm gonna play these two clips and I want y'all to hear this. So here's clip number one that addresses the whole peddling of shovelware and quirky double A experiences. All right, so let's do this. Y'all will hear a momentary double feed because my technical abilities are, are kind of limited. So let's, let's do this. All right, hold on. Hey, this, if, yes. if I may. So, Please. so I, so I want to, I, I've come up with an analogy between, between the two philosophies. Um, Game Pass, Microsoft and Game Pass is like Netflix. Um, you, you buy the service and there's going to be a lot of content on there. You're a TV watcher, you're a movie watcher, you get Netflix and there are some terrible shows on, on Netflix. There are some fantastic shows on Netflix, but most of the stuff is, is kind of in the middle. It's if I want to watch something, I'll have something to watch. Sony is more like the Criterion Collection. There are very few fantastic, you know, options and movies that are available, but you have to pay a premium for them. They're they're phenomenal, but you may get one or two a year and that's it. So if you are a capital G gamer and you just want games to play, this, this is where, you know, this is where Game Pass shines because it just provides you the opportunity to play lots of games in the middle that that double a uh, we bemoan the loss of that double a uh, pla- you know game space whether it was either indie or it was triple a super expensive games and game pass gives gives the space for those games in the middle guys yeah. like that is that is the place where we're going to see new titles that can become giant tentpole franchises and and that's the brilliance that's the brilliance of of the service and i'm so glad it's here okay so to that point i played that whole clip because i didn't want people to say oh mm2k you are caveating information as I said, he values Game Pass. Why? He's an Xbox enthusiast slash fanboy. He's a capital G gamer where he likes to play a lot of games. He just, he loves the double A experiences and all that other stuff. But again, if you go back to the centrifuge of Xbox's problem, Xbox's problem isn't so much with the capital G gamer. The problem is in the, deficiency is with the mainstream gamer and we all know that the mainstream gamer is not the capital g gamer they don't want to just pay play a quantity of games they want quality and he spoke to that in that piece that playstation is more appealing to them because the they have the perception that they may give you less games but that's okay to the to the average gamer the capital a gamer the average gamer because the capital a gamer just plays a couple of games a year anyway they don't care that if they got access to a thousand games they only want to play the top of the line sirloin steak games okay and xbox's name and brand right now fair or not is not synonymous with that 
And that's what this showcase did. It doubled down on that theory that Xbox is all about giving you shovelware, quirky double A experiences. Yes, you have grounded. Yes, you have Sea of Thieves are doing well on Steam. But if you're a capital A gamer, the average gamer, you don't care what the hell is going on on Steam. You don't want just a whole bunch of volume of games. You want quality, okay? So again, he highlights that. That is an Xbox enthusiast slash fanboy. I didn't tell him what to say. He has no idea who the hell I am, okay? So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Secondly, here goes the second fear slash concern that people have that Cicero breaks down perfectly. That even when Xbox does step out of that quirky double A realm and they try to give you triple A quality either in the software or either in the implementation of features that they just fall off the cliff like Wiley e. Coyote. They fall short. Something is wrong. They do not deliver. Now I'm letting you know that right here, Cicero, you know what? I'm going to shut up and I'm just going to play the clip. All right. So. Here we go right here, Cicero talking about how Microsoft's delivery falls short. Now I wanna precurse this with, they're talking about the fact that it might be plausible that Xbox might have to delay Halo. What does Cicero think about them delaying Halo after it's showing? So let's listen to it. Hypothetical here. Right, so there is, there is zero chance of them uh, delaying their flagship title to launch to not launch with their console, um, it, but probably they should um, because oh. because if you're if you're saying this is what next gen is and if the if the first bullet point of next gen is ray tracing which which in a lot of in a lot of the the conversations that's exactly what it is. Um, then and you don't have it in the thing that you're you know like imagine ryan you're a tesla guy right and and you you went out and you got yourself a, a tesla model s the p100d Taking my and, language yeah and and so you sit someone in the car and you're like oh man this car can go super fast go ludicrous mode okay right. well, can we do a ludicrous Oh no, I can't. Uh, there's there's an update that's coming in a few weeks. Like, why am I in the damn car? Why so, am I in the car? Yeah, that is an excellent analogy. Yeah, I cannot I cannot argue with that at all. You, you know, um, but it's still a Tesla, right? Right, it's still a Tesla. It's still electric. It still goes very fast. It still has <laughs> autopilot. It still has all these things. But the one thing that I said it could definitely do the one thing that you know you were in the car to witness is not there you, uh you know it kind of it yeah. kind of it kind of ruins the breakfast a little so in that clip i think is more poignant to anything for full disclosure cicero holmes is an Xbox fanboy and Xbox enthusiast. He doesn't shy away from it. He says the Xbox Series X is day one. He's playing Halo day one. He loves Game Pass, it's integral to his gaming future, and he considers himself a capital G gamer. And I think that he's accurate in a lot of ways to where he says the capital G gamer just wants to play a volume of games. And Xbox suits those needs. With that being said, he understands and he's not willing to damage control the fact that that target demo or that target need being met is not the target demo that's going to help Xbox grow if they only stick to that. That they gotta get better in the quality of stuff that they push out there and they gotta get better in the way that they deliver it. And without doing those two things, they're gonna be stuck in the same place next gen possibly slightly better than they are this gym and that's not good for xbox with all the investments that they've made in the stuff that they're trying to trying to get into okay so with that said being that i let an xbox enthusiast slash fanboy highlight that and i shut the hell up and let him do it 
The same thing that I've been warning since 2018, even 2017 when I said in my very first YouTube video, Phil Spencer got a promotion and I'm not celebrating. Beyond all that, I wanna see y'all damage control this. Now, for those that don't want to damage control this, the ones that have woken up and said, all right, MM2K, we realize that it goes just beyond you and your screaming and your pop filter. You're just someone on the side of the road that can say, a stop sign says stop. We're not going to pin this on you and say, oh, what the hell would stay in all this other stuff. We know it's bigger than you. You just recognize that the stop sign says stop. For those of you that have woken up out of your psychosis and now understand reality, your question may be, all right, Mr. MM2K, being that you were right about this stuff, well, what do you suggest happens? Do you have more than negativity to throw? And yes, I always do. I've always given solutions, and I'll give it once again. My Xbox enthusiasts that have now waken up and realized what the real deal is. First and foremost, Phil Spencer being defended 24 seven has to stop. I get that y'all don't like Reserving to that fact because ponies always say Phil Spencer has to go. But if if y'all start, number one, nobody said he has to go today. That's my personal feeling, feeling but we're going to take baby steps with this. At least at first, start holding the man accountable. Y'all don't hold him accountable enough. Y'all make excuses for him. And even if the PlayStation fanboys criticize Phil Spencer... So what? That's not a credit to them. They didn't discover something. You know what I'm saying? They just, just like I said, an illiterate man can tell you that a stop sign says stop. They just recognize something that's there for everybody to see that y'all just wanted to deny because it was coming out of their mouths. But he, he, uh, I'll put it like this. A fish rots from the head. Wise person told me that. A fish rots from the head. He is the head of Xbox. If you don't demand that better from him, then all you're gonna see is things to continue to rot. All right. And then y'all got to y'all got to come to grips with this. And y'all got to make a decision. What's more important? The brand excelling the way that it did in the past and making money the way that it does now, them having a perfect balance, or defending Phil. What, what's more important? The brand excelling the way that it did the previous two gens as far as saturation and mind share and making money, them coming to a great balance or defending Phil. You know what I'm saying? Because the best way to strike a balance is, you know, I know a lot of people hate Sea of Thieves and talk bad about Grounded, but they are doing financially well. At least, at least Sea of Thieves, Grounded's doing well right now um, at the time of this recording. But that's fine. But y'all know in your heart of hearts, that's those are not the games that you came to Xbox for. Those games are doing well on Steam, on PC. The average Xbox gamer is not a PC guy. The people that made this foundation are not PC people. These are the people that they're now trying to mainly court to, to get money, to get money, money, money. Y'all know these aren't the games that, you, that you're here for, all right? Now it'd be one thing if these games were being made and then it was resulting in your AAA experiences coming, but it's not, it's not. Just more and more of these quirky AA experiences made for PC are happening or are sprouting, okay? Now, with that said, it, it all appeared, it's, it's all apparent that Xbox is just trying to be a more, uh, trying to beat Steam at its own game. Steam tried to increase its saturation beyond PC by coming out with the Steam box, they failed. Xbox says, we're gonna do it in reverse. We're gonna be Steam in reverse. We're gonna be Steam with a box. We're gonna be Steam with a successful box. So we're gonna appeal to the quirky gamer, the double A gamer that's mainly on PC. We're gonna do it better than Steam and we're gonna be able to do it with a box and we're gonna saturate homes with consoles. And if you want better than that, well, first and foremost, again, if that's okay with you, then I'm not speaking to you. This video is not for you. But for those of you that kept saying, MM2K, you just wait. They gonna knock it out the park with quality content like they used to. You just wait. They just had to build this and build that a bit. It's not coming unless you hold their feet to the fire. The strategy has already been put out there. It's already been exposed. Even Cicero Jones understands that. 
Y'all can't damage control this any further. We warned about this before. And as console gamers, I don't think this is what you ultimately want. Xbox turning into Steam. You want the quality content from before. You don't mind there being a sea of thieves, but you want that quality content from the, uh, from before as well. And this is not the track that Xbox is on. Wake up and recognize and realize. So in order for you to get that, you gotta hold them accountable and ask them to maintain a balance and just simply demand better. Period. And that's it from your boy MM2K. Let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comments section below. Because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadia Dosage. And with that said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.